Hi, uh, my name is Walt Kudnohovsky. I'm a landscape architect and an avid watercolor painter. I'm hardly an expert, but I've been painting and teaching long enough to have made some personal discoveries. With the able help of my grandson, Levi Gibson, I am preparing for you a few video demonstrations for your viewing. These are tips that I feel compelled to offer and that are difficult to pull out of the many otherwise helpful and well-intended watercolor magazines and books. In part, the basics are so integral to our method of painting that often, and after a while, we forget that we're doing them. We not remember the source and just plain undervalue their importance. I am of the belief that techniques make a difference, make a big difference. In my intention of the 101 discoveries that watercolor have uh, provided for me, some of them perhaps will resonate with you. Many will be in the videos that will follow. In watercolor, I have found that we learn from our mistakes as well as with any other skill. However, there is plenty to discover. If I can shorten the often frustrating learning curve on a few of the more basic techniques, that would be a success for me. I adore watercolor because of the knife edge need to plan ahead and to embrace the serendipity and surprise that we often find. Walk in a tightrope between intent and surprise some of the surprise of which we should uh, save at all cost. An unfortunate rap for watercolor is that it's mostly uncorrectable and that it's hard. While hard is an attitude, it can also be true if we think of watercolor as correctable and hard that many of us would be comatose should that be true. No matter what, we need to adopt the can-do attitude that there are no mistakes and all is correctable. It turns out this really is true. Hi. In this first demo, I thought it was important to start with basics and not overlook uh, the elemental components of painting with watercolor. I thought I would start by just mentioning the brushes most commonly used. Um, these are round brushes. They range in size from 1 to 18, and each of them by number is larger. We use those more than anything, but we also use flat brushes that allow you to get a bigger surface and area with paint more easily. In addition, we use riggers or script brushes which are able to make lines. We'll talk more about those and how to use them later. In addition, painting goes both ways. We add paint and sometimes need to take paint away. That's done by a brush that is harder, called a scrubber. They come, again, in various sizes. And then in addition to that, there are other specialty brushes, including larger wash brushes for big areas, or especially useful when you're doing big paintings, and adding glazes at the end of paintings. And we even use old toothbrushes to add flecked speckles and so on, all of which we can talk about as we go. But the main brush we'll start with today is the round brush. And what I'd like to do is talk about um, how to hold the brush. I'll switch first from a pencil to the brush. And I'm demonstrating that I'm holding it essentially exactly the same. Maybe even as reasonably close to the tip as I do with a pencil. So too far back and we lose our ability to write script too close and we become infinitesimal. So it's a modest distance back from the edge. The brush, round brushes conveniently, at least for this set, has a round bulb, which I tend to grab onto or just below, so that I can rest my hand as I do when I'm writing and have more control on the paint. So those are brushes. Round brushes, again, used most often in various sizes. Finer work, smaller brushes, bigger work, larger brushes. The next thing uh, we can talk about is the addition of paper. This is uh, my preference to use heavier watercolor paper. This is 300 pound cold press. This is rough and rougher and coarser than smooth finished or hot pressed paper which you can also buy. 
But this allows, takes a lot of abuse, allows you to change and make changes. And so the adage that you can't correct watercolor, I want to prove largely false, that you can in fact, with the course of good paper and paint, be able to go back to white paper when something happens that you're not fond of in your painting. So, uh, so much for brushes and paper. The next is for paint. Paint, in my case, comes in tubes of various sizes. And we squeeze small amounts onto various kinds of palettes. And they can come square and round and, and other forms. But you kind of have your choice of having several colors and being able to mix in the center. Or single colors on the lids of yogurt containers. Or other versions that I'm fond of using. So much for um, paint. When putting paint down, I want to talk about mixing paint. This is an important fact, important technique. And a big part of the success of painting is based already on how one mixes the paint. What we're doing is trying to head for different values in the paint. We can go from white to very light to all the way to, as we move around, to very dark and even darker. And good paintings will have a big range, a bigger range. Not that subtle paintings can't as well, but often we're looking for a bigger range than uh, we might um, initially predict. Values are the key. So this is a value scale, and we're working to make values happen. And that is done in watercolor by mixing, increasing amounts of water for thinner paint and thus lighter value. I'll say that again. The more water, the lighter the value. The less water, the darker the paint. So the darkest paint is already on this palette. In the squeezed out, this is an indigo paint. And you can see that I'm mixing it in a circle, something the size of a half a dollar. I'm taking only a modest amount of paint out of water and I'm mixing it and mixing it and I'm going to check on a test strip which we'll do on the back here to see this is a modest uh, value in order to make this lighter paint I'm going to take some of this light value over to the edge add water this is now the third time this is importing water the fourth time the fifth time so as you can see, one of the common errors is we don't make a full enough range value of the, the paint. And thus we end up with all something very similar, making the paintings more difficult to make and more boring to look at. So, so far we have something that could be called normal or whole milk, which is the mid-range. If I've done this correctly and get over here, we end up with skim milk. And that can be 1 and 2% should you like it. And, in addition, without adding water, now this is not the 10 puddles of water, we can go up to the initial pile of paint and get something closer to what we'll call heavy cream. Now we have already three values. One could imagine four and five or even more values. But we have at least a range on our palette. So something I say is close to 20% of our time maybe even more, is used in mixing the paint, knowing where that paint is on your palette, and when you're going to which one and for what reason. A lot right there. So one has to plan ahead with mixing the values of paint. Skim milk, whole milk, whole cream. So moving next, um, I'm going to talk about what happens with value? When we have photographs, we end up with seeing the value as an aggregated or average value, and it's somewhat more uniform. That creates a standard, and the beginner doesn't see the differences in value. But if one is pushed to shove and look carefully at what's going on on the side of a barn, you will see, oh my goodness, it is darker on one edge than it is on the other. For me, the graded wash, darker to lighter, is the key to creating life in the painting. And what we're trying to do with our value is for any one object, 
the side of a barn, a leaf, the trunk of a tree. We are trying to go from darker to lighter always. And so it's so important that I'll make an emphasis point. There's no exceptions to this. One has to learn to do a graded wash. And that's key. So in this water-soluble graphite painting done on location in Vermont, we have roof going with a graded wash from darker to lighter, wall from darker to lighter, background from darker to lighter, water from darker to lighter, pieces of rock darker to lighter, underneath concrete abutment darker to lighter, edge of building darker to lighter, more rock darker to lighter. Each of those have a graded wash, essential to creating the life in the painting. So um, I'm going to demonstrate, I think, we'll see how we do, a graded wash. The easier graded wash to do is to wet the watercolor paper first. And I'm using the pencil hold, holding it at the bulb, and I'm putting the water down. The first thing I do is usually I don't know how much water is on the brush and nor do I have enough control, so I drop in the middle, not where I want to be accurate. And then I move up to the edge of the paper, and with my, not heavy pressure, not too light a pressure, but medium pressure, I hold my hand steady, and so this is more than anything a finger movement. And the only thing I'm thinking about at this very moment is follow the line to get accuracy in the line. So I'm filling this painting clear water. You might see just a little bit of blue here that's been in the brush before, so that will be helpful for you to, to see. But think of it as uh, clear water. Something just happened that I automatically do, but I turn the paper. In order for me to do that line as opposed to this line, this one I was doing here, and that one I was doing here, and this one I was doing here, so that the paper turns and your hand stays in the same place for more control. There will be times when that's difficult to do, but try your best to keep your hand in a comfortable position. What we have now is a wet piece of paper. There is sizing on this watercolor paper. It's a kind of starch, and it breaks down with the water so that the application of paint will become more uniform. That doesn't always have to happen, but uh, it's nice when it does. So. The next step then is I'm going to start with the darkest paint and that's going to the heavy cream near the pile without adding water. I'm going to do one more thing. There's another tool that we have and it's a watered up moderate sized piece of paper towel. This is a tool that we need to keep at hand and use sporadically with our painting technique. At least this works for me. So heavy cream and across the top edge of the painting. This goes slowly and moderate pressure again, not pushing too hard. And we're trying to make it as dark as possible. Heavy cream, if we were at the extreme of heavy cream, we'd be at yogurt. Now, I can touch the paper and take some of the paint off. If I go only a little ways into this paint, an eighth of an inch, let's say, with less paint, it's going to change two strokes. And do you note that I go from one edge to the other, horizontally and across, in this case, the shortest distance. I'm going to touch again. I haven't gone back. I'm going to go into the paint one more time with less paint on the brush. And overlapping just a little bit each time. So we're moving towards the graded wash we shared a minute ago. Now I'm going to move on, clean the brush. This will be done vigorously. Let me show you how this works. Vigorous cleaning. One, two, three, touch. And so we are creating what is called a thirsty brush. It has a little bit of dampness so that we can continue our work of spreading the paint in all the already wet paper so that we end up with a graded wash. If we lose a little bit of the 
paint, we can go into the skim milk portion of the paint that we have on our thing and pull it across. And we have something approaching a graded wash. I thought it was important to run through a wet and wet wash one more time. And remember we have whole milk, heavy cream on the opposite side and skim milk on the other. And we still have it mixed in our palette. Whole milk, lots of water for skim milk, minimum amount of water but it still has to be runny to work. Cleaning the brush, I'm going to, to uh, redo the wet, wet wash with li limited comment and almost full speed. Water in the middle, medium pressure on the brush, follow the line, turn the paper, follow the line at the edge carefully and accurately, slowly, in the middle, turn the paper, follow the line. So we end up, wherever there's water, the paint will run. And back we go, and carefully. We can leave it set a minute or two, or we can just begin, in this case, for time's sake. We'll start with a heavy cream, very little water, still runny, but thick, across the top, carefully, in a pencil hold. And I'm going from one edge to the other with a clear and deliberate stop. Maybe a third brush. Touch my paper to take some of the paint off. Across, overlapping just a little. Trying to leave no lines. That's the important thing about a graded wash. And I will say it's one of the most difficult things to do with watercolor. Simultaneously with saying it's one of the most important. And so we start with the hardest thing. Across we go. No more than a couple of strokes and taking more paint off. So we have less paint on the brush and water on the paper, so it's getting lighter as we go down, theoretically. Let's see if that will work. Seems to be. Without leaving lines. There will be times when you get little runs or lines. With the very tippy tip of the brush, tease it just a bit so it's less prominent. So the line is less prominent. There we go. So we have a graded wash. In this case, I'm going to dry it because I want to move next to the dry paper wash or the modified wash. I'm going to take a hair dryer starting about 18 inches above the paper. When it runs as it did in this case, we can create a sur surgical tool and lift up some of the loose paint. Dryer, get close to the paper. So I wanted to dry it so that we don't smudge as we turn the other side. Uh, let's see, let's dry it fully. fully. So the modified wash, a little more difficult, is uh, on dry paper at least to begin with. So I'm going to heavy cream. So I'm doing the heavy cream on dry paper. And I take a couple of strokes and maybe three strokes on dry paper. And I'm purposely going across the shortest distance and being careful where I stop, maintaining as much as possible a straight line. Knowing that I can straighten it out like that later. Next, I'm going to go to the whole milk portion of our painting and do a couple of strokes with slightly less pigment and the whole milk. This is the point in which the technique changes from dry to wet. So far this has been on dry paper. Ahead, not touching that paint, 
ahead of the painted area with just a small amount of paint in it, but essentially pure water, I'm creating a water zone, leaving the bottom again dry. Now back to whole milk. And I deliberately paint into the water. That will leave an edge, not unlike the wet earlier. Then, if I go to the, to the skim milk at the very end, I can do the same thing again. Across, touch the paper, take off the paint, and we end up with a dry to wet, to wet graded wash. There will be times when it will be better than others, and there will be less lines. One can you touch it up a little bit, or you can do it all <coughs> over again from the top if you need to. So I'm going to do it one more time on this side. Dry paper, heavy cream, across we go. And I'm doing up to three strokes. Remember heavy cream needs to be a little bit watery. A little bit watery. It needs to run. If it gets to be like yogurt when it just sits there and the shimmies, it's too dry. And we're going to begin taking away some of the... Need to have a little more water on the brush. Took a little too much off. You will get accustomed to that eventually. We're now in the whole milk realm. Now we're going to go to water. Don't touch a head, creating a water dam. Don't go all the way to the end, leave it dry and white. Now we go to skim milk, and it runs into the wet water, and we do strokes across. Notice that this is like a loom, individual strokes all the way across. If we miscue paper towels at hand, and we can create a semblance of a graded wash. Again, touching it just ever so lightly at those edges where they start to set up. They're almost inevitable. I'm going to go back to this one and do what we said a minute ago, since it hasn't dried. I'm going to darken it again, do a second stroke and a third stroke, and touch the paper a little, and a fourth stroke. Medium pressure, we're not pushing too hard. And then we end up with the graded wash for after. So there we have it, wet and wet, and dry to wet graded wash. The essence of painting, all heading towards value changes. Notice one more thing about what we just did. It's like, for me, a curtain pulling down on a window. You start down, you pull it a little further, you pull it a little further, and finally you pull it all the way down. But we're doing one added thing in addition to pulling the curtain down. We are doing the change of the amount of pigment, so it's changing its value at the same time as going down. Okay, so let's summarize what we've been talked about so far. There are several kinds of brushes, round being the most prominent. We'll talk in other d demonstrations the use of the other brushes. And we've talked about a graded wash, where we move from dark to light across any surface. And we talk about holding it as a pencil and working in individual and single strokes, using the paper towel as our assistant in the process. So, let's do a little bit of summary. In this first video, we've attempted to make the following points. Watercolor, first of all, is all about value. That's light to dark and having a full range, assigning values carefully. You will need lots of water to achieve a full range of desired value, from the skim milk to the heavy cream, or even yogurt. Be prepared with the right tool, that's a pencil, a brush thought of as a pencil, and mix the paint in at least three values. Again, heavy cream, whole milk, 
and the 2% or 1% milk. You must have a plan and intention in terms of maintaining a rectangle or a square or if you're painting something more than that. And get your hand in a comfortable pencil-like position and turn your work so that you can see what you're doing and increase, and increase your accuracy for lines and edges, etc. We've made the point that graded wash is a universal. It's to be employed for every element in a painting. And well, among the most difficult of techniques, attentive employment of water and paper towel can bring eye-catching results and a beautiful graded wash. Largest of all of this first session is the message that anyone with sustained attention and a little bit of practice can paint in watercolor. We'll go on to other demonstrations with other subjects. Thanks.